Dun, 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 dun. Well, here we are. Another Moomamo. As you know, Mutants and Masterminds Monday is all about that superhero game, why the only superhero game in existence called Mutants and Masterminds, and we get together and talk about all kinds of stuff related to the topic. And uh, we do that by hanging out with these two guys. Hey, Jens. Hey, everybody. Hello. We've got uh, Alex Thomas. We've got Steve Kenson. And me. I am your disembodied pal, Troy. Mm -hmm. And today we're talking about imps and tricksters. And uh, I like to call April Fool's Day sort of the, I don't know, the amateur hour at the fun factory um you know because mm -hmm. if you really are an imp and a trickster you you know every day is april mm -hmm. fool's day so um yeah exactly you, so you, troy would you yeah. classify yourself more as an imp or a trickster or equal amounts of both you know i think i'm a little bit of both but i'm certainly mm. more of an imp than a trickster mm, i agree I think yeah i, I think. agree yeah i mean I, I don't i do trick and i do enjoy that quite a bit um uh, but the real treat is how my impishness um, and I, mm -hmm. I definitely do that a lot. Um, hey, look at the chat. Shrimps right. and extras. Hey, <laughs> I love that. Um, let's see. What's this? Uh, just recovering from a drive crash, which miraculously was fixed yesterday after a long weekend of no pewter, says the last oh, six I'm months. Sad. I'm well, I'm glad, glad. I had a happy ending. I mean, yeah. Said you went through that arduous deal and glad you're okay. Hey, Sean Vieira is here. Happy April Fool's Day. Love that. And to you, Sean. Uh, and to you as well. Yeah. Raymond says, puts Troy into an imp costume. Yes. Well, I came prepared. Um, <laughs> uh, a a mm -hmm. kind of a, a misty, moist cloud of imp. Um, let's see. Claude, you are rather puckish, I'd say. Yeah. Claude, you know, Claude, I think that you are too a bit imp and a bit trickster. A little, mm. bit, of the, a little bit of both. Um, Rebel Moose, happy Moo Mammo unto you. Jim Josie says, hey, folks. Uh, let's see who else we got. Did I already, did I already call out Raymond? Yeah, you did. Yeah, yep, I did. Um, Gerald Scrimshaw says, how do folks? And we do quite well, I think. Uh, what do you guys think? I always thought so. Yeah, yeah. I like to think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah me too. Doing pretty um, good. A, qu a question for you both. Um, have you seen any April Fool's Day pranks this year that you've liked? I've not seen any, honestly. Hmm. Haven't really been looking per se. I feel like the April Fool's Day thing, it kind of went hard for a while. And then people are like, hey, you know what? We don't really like this anymore. It's not as fun. I know at least that was the case for the video games industry. It was very challenging mm -hmm. to get people to understand that, you know, uh, jokes are kind of fun, but some aren't fun. Right. Yeah, I did. Uh, I did see a fun video today that was a good joke. It was uh, how to build an Adeptus Mechanicus army for World Hammer on a budget, which is hilarious if you know what you're talking about. <laughs> I don't. I don't know what that means, but it sounds the, uh, delightful. The episode wound up. It was like if you spend fifteen hundred dollars, you can have an army. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, I see. I see. And that's the economy version. Yeah. Right, right, right. Uh, let's see. Gene says, uh, hi, guys. Too bad I missed the planning episode. You know, Gene, I wondered where you were. Um, I'm glad you joined mm -hmm. us today. But we did have a lot of fun on the planning session. And if you want to find out exactly what we ended up with, all you got to do is aim your phone at that little QR code right there. It'll take you to the calendar. You can subscribe. And then when we make a change, you'll be notified. You can see all of the upcoming exciting episode top end. That's exactly right. Uh, I don't want to be know, skeptical, but that's the yeah. first time we've had that QR code, and it's April Fool's Day, so I don't know if I believe that's where that QR code <laughs> oh, goes. Not the first time we've had that QR missed code. Missed opportunity. Missed opportunity. We've had QR codes for, like, go look at this product. I don't think we've had one for right. the calendar before. We did, we did have for one the for the calendar show. last time. Yeah, we had <clears> one for <throat> last time for the... Yeah. For the um, um, we did. But, granted, there wasn't anything on it. Um, but, oh, no, no, there was. That was, did we do the planning episode last episode? Is this our yes. first episode yes. of the planning? It yes, just okay. seemed like a long time ago. It really does. Um, let's see. So a new article today that uh, Darlex will no longer say exterminate, but educate. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know about that. As a, as a, you know, as a April Fool's Day 
prank that one ranks about mm. no, i don't know if it ranks quite um i was on yes i was too rebel moose was expecting that i would be you know i don't even know why i didn't embed something fun into that shoot a note for next year i'll leave a note in my, in my planner <laughs> this is why you're an infant not a trickster right that's right yeah yeah that's exactly tricksters right. require a little more planning yeah, they do. They do. Exactly. I think tricksters <laughs> might also be focused solely on the task of tricking, whereas I've got a few other things on the fire. <laughs> so we do. Do we think that tricksters are lawful shenanigans and imps are chaotic shenanigans? Is that the alignment breakdown of tricksters and imps? Hmm. Mm, I don't think I'd call either one of them lawful. Hmm. I think tricksters well, are a little more prepared. Now, does lawful. Oh, there's a good question. Does lawful suggest. It, it suggests following follow following a code, but not necessarily a good one. Or yeah, following yeah. rules of some yeah. kind. I mean, okay. after all, there is lawful evil. So I mean, it doesn't right. suggest your death gravity. Good. Yeah. Hi, drama dork. Good to see you. Welcome. You here. Awful works though. <laughs> awful, tr awful shenanigans versus chaotic yes. shenanigans. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. So, uh, imps and tricksters on this mm -hmm. day on April Fools. The twenty twenty fourth yes. year of our, you know, of our Lord Steve Kenson, of our Lord Steve Kenson <laughs> in the Steve Kenson cinematic <laughs> universe. Um, you know, I'm wondering what you know. So these are we all know what an imp and a trickster is, but in the context of meetings mm -hmm. and masterminds, it's a little bit deeper. Yeah, it can be. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, let's talk about it. I uh, mean, let me see. Oh. Yeah, I was oh, going to say a pook already brought up uh, whether or not we are talking strictly in the sort of cosmic sense of beings. And, and I don't think we are. I think we're talking about all kinds of um, antagonists and characters who are imps and tricksters in their own fashion. Yeah. Yeah. Really just how to play pranks on your players or your player characters. Yeah. You can play pranks on your players if you want, but that's a different episode. Right. Indeed. And that's, um, that's, that's another thing to negotiate with your friends if you still have any. Right. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, but uh, really, you know, any sort of antagonist whose primary means of engaging with the players is dis distorting their view of what's happening. Mm -hmm. uh, this could be either physically changing the reality the way Quirk does with our adventure into the idiot box, or if you're thinking Mysterio from Spider Man, who can mm -hmm. make Spider Man see anything that he wants him to, which really changes the rules of engagement for how we play with him. Right. Well, what the I interesting to do thing oh, from the go ahead. Well, I was going to say the interesting thing from the get go with with imps and tricksters is that they immediately present challenges other than combat, um, and uh, they're usually more interested in playing tricks on the character, the heroes, than they are in necessarily just outright killing them. Um, so it immediately. Uh, changes the stakes of the game a little bit um, and uh, can can provide for a, a little bit more of a fun, lighthearted, sort of more Silver Agey, superhero y style no, uh, not so to it, especially right. if. Yeah. Right, there's not quite so much at stake. I mean, you can ha you can certainly have imps and tricksters who are deadly serious and dangerous if you want them to be. You know, arcades, murder world comes to mind. Um, but even that is kind of whimsical and has, uh, you know, a little bit more of uh, tricks to it than, you know, just, you know, bang, you're dead. Right, right, right. Uh, you know, what I wanted to do real fast before we dove in completely is to just take a quick peek. And I think we'll call this segment, um, What's in the Tank? <laughs> What's and, in the uh, Tank? That's right. Because what's in the tank? Um, of course, I'm talking about the atomic think tank. And if you're mm -hmm. a hero worth your salt, if you're a trickster, an imp, whatever you are, a villain, you could be anything. You just have to be existing here on the think tank where we've got the Aegis files. And within, yes. so the so people who aren't familiar with uh, what is a, what does Aegis stand for? I say Aegis is Aegis. Uh, Aegis is uh, the American Elite Government Intervention Service um, and is the super spy uh, secret agency that handles all kinds of dangerous, super-powered, extra-normal threats. I yeah. love it. And You could the, say they act as like a shield for the uh, normal people. Of the one center. might I say see, that, yes. I see. That makes sense to me. I like it. I like it a lot. Um, and we have chosen, this is the, the conceit here is that you've got access to the database. And in that database mm -hmm. are heroes and villains and stat blocks and all kinds of good stuff 
look at this. So we've got, um, this is, ju- I'm trying to see when this was done, oh, about an hour ago. So li- listen, this place is hopping. Chris Davies submits to Der yeah. Schmelzer. We've got uh, Devious Hearts here with the Monkey King. Yeah. Love that. The <laughs> the man now dog submits Professor Morgan. Uh, these go on. And <laughs> let me, wait a minute, what's this? Oh, the yeah, stars? Yeah. yeah. That's so good. This is great. I mean, and look at the way, look at how much effort and information there is here. Absolutely the best. If you're looking for some additional, uh, you know, flavor for your adventure, we've also got the Freedom City Library. Uh, Let's take a look at the feed. What have we got going on here? Puzzle Masters. Oh, we've got two articles. One is Puzzle Masters. Two articles that involve exactly what we're talking about Dude, that's <laughs> right something wow this synergy is just off the charts uh puzzle masters death traps and the villains that use them and tricksters this is fun right why aren't you laughing uh and uh let's see what jacob grossier's got a campaign idea on and on we go more articles yeah. from devious devious has really knocked yeah. the ball uh, out of the bar i think uh jacob's uh steel storm idea actually has a lot of fun potential it's basically what if the silver storm in Emerald City happened in Ferroburg instead? Oh, yeah. Which is and bad he, news for everybody. Yeah, bad which news, is bad right. news for everyone concerned. And so what's great about this stuff is that you can hop on, you can read, you can ask questions, you can participate in the um, – let's see. I want to jump over to the chat real fast because it is – over here in the commons, uh, the chat is – just popping off all kinds of stuff you'll get uh, uh, updates on uh, what people just general sort of chatter about heroes and villains and all kinds of good stuff um you know i was saw jacob talking about his idea and sharing some notions and we'll pop in there uh, every once in a while devious is posting articles there's just a ton happening and uh it is i am just absolutely imminently absolutely 100 percent pleased at the uh at the whole endeavor and really encourage folks to if you haven't had a chance yet pop on in mm-hmm. check it out you can join up at the link that i'm going to drop here momentarily and once you do you'll not only have access to mutants and masterminds you'll have access to our games that are powered by the adventure game engine you'll have um Indeed. yeah we'll have special we're also going to be setting up special sp- places for people who are artists so that if you want to commission some work for your campaign, you can work with them. Um, well, people who write, uh, people who are GMs, people who want to play, looking for group, all that stuff and more. Just hit that link, join up, and uh, and understand this. We're in the process of building things up. So if there's something missing, let us know, and mm-hmm. we'll build it up. Yeah, and uh, Yeah, we're having a lot of fun with that. Absolutely having fun with that. Um, okay, so with that out of the way, let's talk imps and tricksters. Hmm. Yeah, so uh, imps and tricksters, lots of fun stuff to go over for this. Um, specifically, just the notion of getting to mess with your players in a fun mm-hmm. way. Um, I think the cool thing about, I think the cool opportunity that imps and tricksters offer for your game is sort of a palate cleanser if bad things have happened and you want to mm-hmm. add in, inject sort of a light, off, nonsensical adventure into things. Or if you want to show your players something like a mirror for their characters, like they go into a place where their characters are very different, but they get to see sort of what would happen if they went down the wrong path or Mm -hmm. yeah, just lots of ways to mess with reality, which I think is a ton of fun. Mm -hmm. Indeed. So uh, do you want to talk about the, the super powerful cosmic imps and tricksters first and work our way to the uh, more human level? Um. Hmm. Yeah, I guess no, we should I, probably work our way up to top to bottom. I think I like that. But, right. but but let's do this. Um, let's talk about because one of the one of our taglines of this whole thing is how to how to incorporate imps and tricksters into the whole process without pissing off your players. And mm-hmm. you know, well, do that's we want what to, we're going to talk about. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Let's let's do that. So just to set ground rules with imps and tricksters, you do really want to ex- you know let your players know that there's an op- there's a chance that something like this can happen in your game world. Mm-hmm. Because right, yeah. it can really derail the tone you're setting. It can really derail their sort of faith in th- things that are happening, being real and having consequences. Mm-hmm. Um, this isn't something you want to spring on them like you might in a in a non-interactive storytelling mode. Like when Mixie shows up to mess with Superman, it's OK because we're not Superman. and We could see him struggle through it and not be frustrated the way right. that Superman probably is. Right. 
No, um, is is a tactic maybe, or is is an option to kind of create a sort of side episode experience for you know that's sort of silly and fun that isn't doesn't necessarily mess with their with their active mm -hmm. campaign or is yeah that's a good tack mm -hmm. i'd also suggest really understanding where the lines are for the players in regards to their characters like what what actions they would be the most uncomfortable seeing their players go through and just how far you can go yeah yeah and not going over that line yeah indeed um, and you know it's the one of the good things especially about the you know super powerful cosmic trickster types is that they can have very low consequence um encounters because you can have you know a cosmic trickster who you know completely transforms the world as far as the heroes are concerned but when they defeat them everything just snaps back to normal and you know no harm no foul nothing you know no the lasting effects yeah yeah. You know, apart from, you know, the hero's possible need for therapy, you know, um, right. you know, but, you know, otherwise it's all, you know, just one and done and then it's, you know, back to normal. And so you don't have to worry about that, you know, as far as that goes. Got you. Uh, yeah. Now, the last six months, that's real quick. Are Cosmic Imp stories usually battle episodes then? Bottle episodes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, usually. Bottle, yeah, they tend to be. Yeah, bottle. Usually. They tend there to are bottle instances. Episodes. There are instances where they're not, and that's usually when the trickster reveals at the end that they're not really a trickster. They're more like an adjudicator mm -hmm. or somebody who's come to make a judgment on the characters, and they've decided to do it in this silly way. Um, oddly enough, Supernatural has a really good example of that, the TV show, where um, mm -hmm. the trickster is revealed to be somebody who is judging the two main characters about yep. their worthiness. Yeah, uh, <laughs> kind of like Q in Star Trek in some regards as well. Mm -hmm. I'm not familiar with the term bottle episode. It's an episode where it it's just this is the story and it doesn't affect the outside story. Ah, yeah. It's like it's a story in a bottle. The concept that I brought up, but not yeah. knowing what it was called. I see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. And oftentimes in um, especially in TV, bottle episodes refer to the location of the episode. It often means a, mm -hmm. a, a show that's entirely self-contained on one set. Ah, um, I so see. that basically the characters don't go outside. They don't move around a lot. It's very contained. And it's, it's, they were bottle episodes were often done just to save money because it was just, you know, we just, we, we need something to happen all on this set, right. you know, for this episode because we can't afford another set right now. Okay, yeah. sure, sure. A lot of Agatha Christie stories. A lot of white people on an island kill each other stories are bottle mm -hmm. episodes. Yes. <laughs> one of my favorite genres. Yes, the infamous cozy mystery. Yeah, I do include the menu as one of those. Mm -hmm. The menu is that the that's that movie with uh Ray Fiennes and Annie Tiller Joy where they I, go to uh we... they go to crazy chef Gordon Ramsay's restaurant, and he right. kills everybody. yes, he's like, You donkey, you're eating your own fingers. You know, I that whole thing, that movie, I, I literally didn't really know what I was walking into with some friends, and I sat, I was the worst movie friend to be watching with because I just called every shot, and I was just like, Okay, I need to leave, <laughs> I'm ruining <laughs> this movie, and I hate it. I gotta uh, go. Yeah, I got to go. Uh, the um, cool thing about bottle episodes in a tabletop role playing game, though, is that you can do them without the budget restriction weighing mm -hmm. on you. That's right. So you can make the bottle a lot bigger than sure. the intent of a bottle episode. So you could put them in a whole extra dimensional space or you can yep. like holodeck episodes where they get stuck on the holodeck are bottle episodes in Star Trek. But they tend to have more than one scene, more than one set. Yeah, but nice. Yeah, They're I mean, still trapped in the holodeck. In many regards, uh, Into the Idiot Box is, is a bottle episode in that regard, even though it involves a whole series of different settings. Yeah, it's like a rushing gotcha. nesting bottle. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right, well, that's so great. That's, no, I, I not known that concept. Go ahead, Steve. So that brings up the other thing about um, uh, the really powerful tricksters is uh, the fact that they're often power level X characters. Um, who basic, are basically omnipotent as far as the plot is concerned. Uh, they might have a few specific limitations and often figure out what those are is a key thing in the plot. Um, but basically, they can just do whatever they want. Um, and uh, that is uh, an important and very sort of carefully presented situation in uh, a tabletop role-playing game. Um, it, because the, the the impression that the heroes are essentially powerless uh, against a particular opponent 
um, can often be very frustrating for the players. Um, yeah. If if they feel like their characters have you know no agency, um, then they're going to kind of lose interest in the story. So it's it's a lot of it is is making sure that the the players have real choices to make, uh, even if you know one of them the ones you've taken away is you know punching this guy. Right. Yeah. 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 I think, yeah sound advice. Having alternative things for them to do and. It's making sure that they're familiar with the, this trope before mm -hmm. they go in, because some people aren't familiar that there are immortal beings who can just change the universe because they say so right. in superhero settings. Right, right. And yeah, they might be influenced by a particular show they watched where they handled it differently and, and be influenced mm -hmm. in a totally. Yeah, I like that. Um, yeah. uh, That's another episode. great bottle episode for Supernatural is the one where Dean dies all the time. It's just Groundhog Day, but mm -hmm. Sam keeps having to deal with every time Dean dies, he's got to restart the cycle. Yeah, right. And yeah, the yeah. Um, the Game Master's Guide, for example, in talking about the, the imp archetype, talks about the trope of how especially um the more powerful the the trickster character is the more likely it is they have some spe very specific weakness um and that that is it is sort of key to dealing with them uh and the part of the part of the adventure is usually the heroes figuring out either figuring out what the weakness is or figuring out how to use it to their advantage Right, right. Yeah, and I think from a from an adventure design perspective, you want to make sure that there are opportunities for them to observe this information or learn this information, or use their hero points to interact with this mechanic that the imp has. Mm -hmm. um, I we keep talking about idiot box, but one of the cool things about that adventure is that there is a remote control feature in the adventure where if you if um, quirk gets boarded i feel change the channel to another adventure or you could spend a hero point to make him change the channel you don't get to decide where it goes but you can get out of that situation for a minute while that show goes on commercial break you go to the other one and then maybe when you come back the gm has gotten you a little bit out of the corner that you found yourself in mm -hmm. love yeah. that now the idiot box being uh one of our astonishing adventures now it's included in the in the um the collection right? adventures assembled Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. So I want to make sure I drop that link. I'll drop that in just one second. Uh, but um, but fun. I mean, like that's uh, a real solid advice. And then you know, I think that the when you think about take like issues around taking away player agency, are there other things that you want to consider that are as important, or maybe the next important things when it comes to how players are consuming this stuff and what they might do or think. I think it's very important that you remember that in Mutants and Masterminds, characters should always fail forward. So even if they mm. can't do the thing that they want to do, it unlocks an interesting opportunity for them. Right. Um, and it gives them some information other than that doesn't work. What do you want to do next? You want to have, okay, that didn't work, but you notice blank, blah, 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 as mm. you're developing how that, how this cosmic being works. I love yeah, that. That's an yeah. excellent point. And, well, you know, ulti the ultimate, you know, sort of, fail forward element of the of the system is the is the hero point awards that the players should be racking up for the yeah sorry that doesn't work <laughs> you know instances but here have a hero point because it's you're going to need it later on yeah it's really hard because this is an instance where you want to frustrate the characters but you don't want to frustrate the players mm -hmm. because when the players start getting frustrated it stops being fun and it starts being a right. chore for them right 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 and you want them to be having as much fun as you are presenting this situation mm -hmm. so yeah i think it's coming up with really creative ways that the uh trickster is messing with them so coming up with interesting scenarios that they find themselves in mm -hmm. that are objectively funny from an outside perspective but yeah. don't feel like they're laughing at the characters more laughing with the players right. at the characters yeah got gotcha. you and uh, sometimes it can be helpful to just enlist the players in that um, I have found even in regular mutants and masterminds games, um, getting the player to tell me, you know, if, if their character like just really rolls a terrible die roll or something like that, just getting the player to tell me what happens, you know, how does your character fail at this? Um, That's a great, gives, gives them a greater sense of agency over it. Um, and um, they often come up with more interesting twists uh, as far as that that apply to their character, or at least they they 
will put their character into difficult situations that they find interesting. Right. Yeah. You can allow them to show you where the boundaries are. Yeah. Yeah. And you can like you could tie in sort of their complications or mm -hmm. relationships that they're still developing with NPCs almost as like a test run for is this what really what I want? You can do sort of like a monkey's paw situation a mm -hmm. lot of times too. Yep. Yeah. Or well, giving yeah. them what they want but not what they need, or what they need but not what they want. Yeah, because I mean, Ooh, a, I like a very common trickster situation is is exactly that is the sort of sort of twisted wish granting um, thing where uh, it's like, well, everything seems really great, like you've got everything you wanted, and how is your character feeling about that? See, I like that. I, so I was just going to ask, you know, for the two of you, how do you gauge the reaction or how, when do you know that it might be time to turn a dial, you know, one way or the other based on, you know, sort of what you're seeing? It's a lot of empathy. It's a lot of seeing sure. if it's a lot of being able to read uh, that the player is having a bad time as the player versus the character. Mm -hmm. You'll be able to tell it in their body language or the way that they're responding to some of the prompts. Um, yeah. You know, if they're not lightheartedly laughing about what's happening, it's probably time to either change tact or mm -hmm. dial it back a little bit or right or have right. that discussion in between games. If mm -hmm. it's a multiple session sort of deal like I'm known yeah. to do. Yeah. I mean, especially if the <laughs> player seems bored or unengaged, you know, in the in the adventure, um, you might not be going down the right path for them. Do you think that uh, uh do you, is it the right time to say hey I'm just checking in everyone doing okay kind of, that kind of a thing or you know yeah. will you yeah I'm a I'm a big fan of doing that after sessions after every session really I like to do a temperature check with players to be like hey um, I think we're calling it aftercare now yeah yeah how did you you know how was the session for you is there anything you'd like to see more of less of you know if you don't want to say it here in front of everybody please send me a message between sessions yeah um. And it's also setting the expectation. Is this a silly scenario or is this a scenario that is meant to have an impact on the character? Right. Because that will also affect how the player reacts to it. Because I would argue that the um, there's a Superman story about the Black Mercy plant being put on mm -hmm. him where he gets everything he wants, but yeah, he actively has to turn away from it to get right. out of that In situation. Yeah. And that sucks. That would be hard mm -hmm. for the player, I think. Yeah. But it's also a great story. So, I mean, it's it's setting that tone when you get into that situation. You know, if they're expecting a sort of light, carefree shenanigans sort of cosmic trick mm -hmm. trickery, they're not going to want to deal with, OK, I've got to I'd let Krypton get destroyed. I have to All make right. the decision to throw away everything I've ever wanted. Everything I ever wanted. Yeah. Got you. Yeah, that's great. Solid yeah. advice. Um, actionable, uh, practical. I love all that. Um, so let's mm -hmm. talk about them. Let's talk about them ibs and them tricksters. Yeah, I do. Uh, Sean Holland brings up that they're easier to use in person as opposed mm -hmm. to online because it's easier to read body language when you could see mm, everybody sure. present. That's not always practical for everybody, but yeah, I would recommend um, if you are playing exclusively online, really think about it or know how well you know the players before you yeah. introduce something like that. You know, if you're Agreed. watching right now on demand, you're going to definitely want to check out the chat. It is, as per the norm, just a wealth of of uh, of episodes and Insight. ideas and insights. And uh, so check that out for sure. There's good stuff going on. Indeed. Yeah, Claude mentions the Young Justice failsafe episode is another example of that sort of trickery, like the mm -hmm. Black Mercy, uh, yep. like the for the man who has everything graphic novel. Yep. Um, which again, that I think that falls under the category of what we're talking about, but that's more about messing with player, um, since like players' information about what's going on, mm -hmm. rather than being sort of a lighthearted trickster or imp. Yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. So and so for the purposes of today, the imps and the tricksters are the we're, we were on we're airing on the lighter side of of the generally. Actors. Okay. Yeah, we we'll uh, want to give advice for both, but I think like, for the most part, we're talking about sort of like mm -hmm. let's have a fun time doing yeah. something rollicking somewhere else. Yeah. Like we gotcha. mentioned, uh, you know, there are definitely some dark elements to it. Um, I think that one of the other things uh, that I've noticed in my own games that you have to kind of watch out for is, uh, especially with tricksters, um, if you're going to go 
the root of a character, having an antagonist who's an illusionist or a shape changer or um, a dis what I would call a deceiver, essentially a character whose mm. whose main shtick is is fooling the char the heroes in some way. Um, you have to be very careful that you do not make your players paranoid, mm -hmm. um, because. See. At that point, you will completely drain all the fun out of your game because right. the characters will become so cautious that they will not trust anyone uh, ever, uh, and their all of their their countermeasures to try and deal with this deceiver um, will just grind the game to a halt because That's they very... you know like. They will question everything. Yeah, yeah, that's a really, really good thing to bring up, and that is just knowing the kind of activity or or uh, what you're going to engage the mind in is going to burn the battery down, uh, you know, and is going to mm -hmm. need to be either refreshed or, you know, just be ready for that. Um, yeah, uh, and I think that's one of the big difficulties between this is such a big trope in non interactive media because we can be frustrated that the the characters we're reading about or watching don't do these things, but right players who are going to have it done to them are going to be very on edge and they're going to be doing all of the things that you wish the characters that you were reading about would do yeah. right you yeah. sort of have to take a practical step back from the story and be like i am going to trick you this story arc that does not mean i am always going to trick you trick please you. don't take that away from this yeah. right i'm not going right. to tell you how i'm going to trick you but yep. the, what you see is not going to be what you get with this story arc, but that does not I, mean I'm defining the whole campaign with that. Please go with me on this journey and trust me. Yeah, yeah, that's I had to very, very carefully space out the use of that character right. um, so that pretty much it was, it was always whenever the players started to forget that he was around <laughs> was the time <laughs> for him to do something smart. Um, that's smart. And yeah. they were like, Oh, it's him again. Um, but then it would, he wouldn't be around for a while mm -hmm. and, you know, they would, they would eventually, they, they'd have a very little, like initial, like, okay, like something's going on, but then they would relax. And that's when, you know, you got it. That's when you pounce. <laughs> yeah. That's a really good point. Steve brings up is that if you can attach that paranoia and disbelief to one NPC who shows mm -hmm. up when that is relevant, they yeah. won't do it all the time. They'll just hey, associate that's... that with that character. Yeah. They associate it with that character. Yeah, I yeah. do that with Sophie in our multiverse of Earth Prime because so she's when the Sophie's worst. around, they know right. that there's some. Yeah, some they know that she's probably trouble. up to something. That's or I angry. flip the script on them and put them on anti Earth where Sophie was not the problem. <laughs> right. Which in and oh, of itself great. is kind of a problem. Right. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Uh, here's a question from Angel I like. Uh, um, what would the mask, uh, uh, the Jim Carrey movie version, uh, be a high level mm -hmm. imp or reality trickster? Yeah, kind of. Pretty up there. I mean, you know, as a character, very similar to like the Impossible Man and, mm -hmm. you know, other, I don't know if they're quite power level X, but pretty close to it because they're, mm -hmm. you know, sort of uh, operating under um, the rules of cartoon physics rather than that, yeah. real world <laughs> physics. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's it. Was he Toon a bad Force guy? is very powerful. Yeah, I, was he... I don't think the mask is a bad guy. I think I mean, the mask is, is an antagonist. Is barely, barely tolerable, <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> gotcha. I don't gotcha. think good and evil is a paradigm that the mask falls along. I think it's right. more more law and chaos like we were talking like, about. Like many, I was going to say, like many tricksters, it's really just about, you know, like that was funny. Like, <laughs> right. Yeah. It was a little yeah. weird and kind of funny. Rush. And, yeah. Yeah, and I do think there there are like tiers of like we're asking about the mask. I think there are definitely set tiers of imp versus trickster with like the PLX imps, mm -hmm. people like Loki or Eris, the goddess of chaos sure. down yep. there. Then we're getting into things like Mysterio, who are super villains who have that sort of trickery thing, and then guys right. like the Riddler who are just right. characters like Mystique. Yeah, oh, sure. I mean, okay. Effective shapeshifters and the like. Got you. Okay. Um, let's see. Devious says the mask has reality warping powers, but only in his immediate area. Yeah. Very limited. You know, mm. and that's that's another one of those things where we're talking about some characters have very specific limitations. Got yeah, you. and I think it when you're designing these kinds of characters or these kinds of scenarios, you want to come up with something very specific and probably a little silly. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like Mixie having to say his name backwards is right. Is pretty silly. That yeah. is pretty silly, yeah. Or Quirk's oh. thing is Quirk is a teenager and right. <laughs> comes with the it's he's a teenager with ADHD. So he just comes right. with the, if you can make him bored, he'll move on to something else. Yep. <laughs> right. 
<laughs> um, let's see. Uh, Sean Holland says, can you do oblique encounters with an imp, like a character trying to help a super guy get rid of that guy, the Miz? Miz yeah, Uzi? you can. You can. I mean, I think you want to be careful about not making the characters guest stars in their own story. Um, you know, I mean, that can be interesting for like a one shot. Mm -hmm. you know thing just as a change of pace where they're they're sort of peripherally involved in some what basically amounts to somebody else's story right. um, i just uh, just reading that i thought of a scenario where the uh staff of the daily planet have to help superman deal with mixie right and like you the know. pcs are like perry white and lois and jimmy yeah interesting you know so gene mentioned earlier in the chat uh how would you build a uh, a clown how would you do a superpowered clown in the context of uh, imps and tricksters uh well the cool thing about doing things like the plx imps and tricksters is you don't really have to do any stat building you, have you just to build have to anything, do anything yeah yeah you just have to do the character design and the the weakness part and what they're what they get their kicks out of so a superpowered right. clown you're looking at things like i want to make everything a circus or i want to make everything france <laughs> or sure, just something right, yeah. Yeah. yeah cotton candy yeah, yeah right yeah or cartoons like something something that's where their shtick lives mm -hmm. um yeah if you're looking at somebody like the joker who is kind of a super not a super powered clown trickster but mm -hmm. is a clown trickster super villain right um it's going to be more about minion design and more about how you implement them in the story than their stats um mm -hmm. yeah you want to make sure that they've got a lot of plans within plans and they've got a lot. They've almost got their own set mm -hmm. of challenge points where they work a little separately from the rules of the game as normal. Right. Right. So they have little like, I'm going to mess with reality a little bit here. And instead of like changing everything into a TV show, it's like, oh, actually, I did actually manage to kidnap your butler, Batman. He's over there. Right. Uh, go save him or things like that. That's actually a great lead in to talking about the sort of low level trickster characters yeah. because mm -hmm. alex raises the the really cogent point um about them is that rather than the villains being the ones who change reality it's basically the game master who needs to be changing reality mm -hmm. um but in a fashion that you're moving things around behind the scenes so the players ideally don't know you're changing reality um because the the difficult thing with tricksters um, is that by definition, they have to be really smart uh, mm -hmm. and their plans have to be really exceptionally clever. Yeah. Um, and not, but yet not too clever for the players to figure out because otherwise that's just going to end in frustration for everybody. Um, so you have to, in my experience, have a certain amount of nimble game mastering where you see an opportunity uh, like Alex said, you know, of like, this is a great place for the character's uh, relationship character to have been kidnapped um, and to be, you know, placed in a death trap or, you know, tied to a track of a roller coaster or whatever. Right. Um, and uh, to say, you know, basically in the middle of the adventure, oh, yeah, that's absolutely what happened. And, and this th this guy arranged that kidnapping, you know, off ca off camera. You You weren't around for that. You know. Yeah. And that I mean that's the real trick is you wanna you wanna gamify that my plan was to get captured all along thing that comes up with right. the Joker or Loki right. or like that wasn't actually me, that was a body double or just things like right. that where it is sort of plot contrivances that mm -hmm. are in in tone with the genre and telling your players, you know, there is, you know there are gonna be times where this character is just such a master planner and I'm dumb, so please give me some grace. A poop, it's right. like you're reading my mind. Um, you know, it is uh, right now 40 after the hour, and we are um, encouraging you uh, with all of our verve and energy without any tricks or impishness to uh, make sure you're liking, sharing, subscribing. Um, you mm -hmm. know, you want to tickle that uh, bell so that you get the first, you'll be among the first to know when we go live. So if you're sitting there at home and you're like, oh, shoot, I missed it. You just have to exactly. click that bell and say subscribe to all the updates and you'll get them. And we got a lot of good other mm -hmm. streams that happen all throughout the the month. A lot of good things happening. So make sure mm -hmm. and uh, do me a favor. Uh, tell a friend about it. If you have friends really into um, mm -hmm. Mutants Masterminds and they're not hanging out here with you, well, you better get them over here. We'd like to see them. Um, but yeah, do it. Yeah. Do it. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, but that is... Um... And I mean, you have to decide if you're superpowered clown or other 
jumped up trickster is a physical threat for the heroes or is I'm just not. the mental threat behind everything. Right. Or is there a situation where the trickster can become a physical threat and that is suddenly their their might is it matches their brought on their mind and now all mm -hmm. of a sudden it's a bigger threat. Sort of like in the um the Arkham Asylum game where Joker gets the super venom and gets pumped up to a giant bane level monster. Mm-hmm. Well, the Zatrin, right. we, we actually waited for you, but we had to start, um, but we did keep your sea warm. And, you know, that's uh, a good example. Somebody mentioned um, the, the Mad Mod from Teen Titans as another example mm -hmm. of that kind of trickster. You know, that might be the trickster's very specific limitation is that uh, if you can only get your hands on them, <laughs> then, yeah. then they're toast. <laughs> oh, no, I'm made of paper. <laughs> you know. I mean, but the trick is, you know, actually managing to do that and actually mm -hmm. um, confirming that it really is them when you actually do do that. Do do. Yeah. And a lot of, um, I think one it's of the things to, I think one of the things to really <laughs> interrogate you. is you want to include this trickster villain because you want to challenge them in a way that isn't just punching. Mm -hmm. So making them not able to stand up in a fight is perfectly fine because that's not the challenge you're trying to present to the players with this sort of villain. Right. Well, so in the Wayne, I can't believe this show goes so fast every time we do it. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, uh, what are let's let's um, uh, do that range. You know, we talked we've talked already about some of the sort of the um, PLX type. Um, what are what are some other imps and tricksters of note? Yeah, I think the level right underneath that is going to be at least in Earth Prime terms people like chaos or trickster gods where they're yeah. not plx they still have a pl but they're and also like yeah. 15 or 16 oftentimes yeah so they still are a physical threat but their real deal isn't that it's it's the the shenanigans they pull i mm -hmm. wrote an adventure with eris where she decided she was going to throw a bomb into the other Greek gods' social lives and the heroes had to pick up the mess that was all in the family where hera kicked oh, zeus yeah. out and like Hephaestus and Aphrodite got a divorce because Eris was just roaming around causing chaos with her shape shifting and with um, with her pomegranates and things like that. It was all, it was a whole thing. Um, which those tricksters are generally tricksters who have much more of a goal in mind when they go out with their trickery. They want to accomplish right. something. They want to conquer. They want to change the status quo. It's not just for their own amusement. And I think that right. is the big change. Right. It's interesting, especially um, that um, although it's mostly true of the high level tricksters Alex is talking about, often it'll be a whole range of tricksters who really want to make a point of mm -hmm. some kind. They have they have something that they are just particular about and they want to prove that they are right. Um, and oftentimes it will be things like finding ways to tear down the concept of heroism or mm -hmm. the concept of civilization or polite society or um, any of those sorts of things, you know, where the, that's what the trickster is trying to do. Um, and, you know, oftentimes the way the heroes win is by protecting or upholding or proving that the trickster is wrong. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Alex Klein has a question. Were they called bombogranates? Yes, as a matter of fact. <laughs> no, but they should have been. No, um, retroactively yes yeah retroactively yeah. see editor's note asterisks uh, right <laughs> all in the family issue three or something like that <laughs> i love that um let me see oh yeah yeah so now we've got our own uh sort of mutants and masterminds tricksters and and imps mm -hmm. um you know and, and is sure. it abracadaver is that what it is or is it Abra oh, abracadaver yeah <laughs> i don't know that i would say abracadaver is a trickster but mm -hmm. So I mean, he does. Problem. He does have a. He does have a stick, which is kind of nice. Right. What is this? Right. Stick Actually, again, I, I see him in my mind, but I don't. As well, he's, a, he's an undead stage magician. That's right. Basically. Yeah. And he's all about putting on a show, and that actually raises an interesting point. And in a couple of the folks that pe people mention in the chat as well, um, some characters just because a character has a shtick doesn't necessarily make them a trickster. Okay. Um, for example, Mirror Master is certainly deceptive, and he does use illusions and trickery a lot. But Mirror Master is just a thief. You mm -hmm. know, he's only interested uh... in, in robbing people and getting rich. Um, and he uses trickery to do it, 
Um, but I wouldn't necessarily call him uh, his role as being much of a trickster. As so far trickster as trickster kind of tricking people as as a central point of their existence, right? Like yeah, that's, it's kind of that's their, their thing. That's that's yeah. what they're out to do. The trickery is part of their motivation, not just part of their arsenal. I think that's yeah, the important thing. Yeah, I tend to agree. <laughs> you know, whereas on the other hand, um, Arcade, the X Men's enemy, who primarily works as an assassin. Um, you know, he's hired to kill people, is a trickster um, because Arcade could just kill people. Um, but for him, it's all about the show. It's about the trickery. It's all about, you know, the way he does it. Was Arcade the the um, the guy in the white suit? With guy the, in the white suit, yeah. Yeah, with the red hair and the... Yep. I remember that. I remember it quite vividly. Um Let's see. Oh, the prankster, another flash villain. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I would say that Riddler and Joker sort of fall underneath that trickster archetype. They do. Um, Riddler more than Joker, I would think, because mm -hmm. part of it for Riddler is proving that he's smarter than he's Batman. Smarter than everybody else. Yeah. And trying to trick everybody um, more so than the crimes that the Riddler commits. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, indeed. Yeah. And then Joker's sort of an agent of chaos who likes being deceptive and employing, you know, mind games and things like that. Right. Yeah. 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 John John Pelogic raises raises the the scenario of a, a power level X trickster who decides to self limit their powers so that they can be a a superhero or a villain, and you can do a fun story where you know the the because uh, the other tropes folks mentioned was the was the helpful trickster. Mm -hmm. You know, the Batmite type who Devious basically shows up is like, I want to help. But, you know, of yeah. course, everything they do is just disastrous. Yes. Um, yeah. You know, um, and you can actually play an interesting story with the notion of, you know, the, the trickster, omnipotent trickster who shows up and says, hey, I want to join your team and fight crime. Um, and the heroes are like, OK, like the only way that'll ever possibly work is you have to limit your powers. Mm -hmm. um, and playing through the scenario of can the trickster really do that and how hard is it for them to do that? Right. Yeah. You know? yeah. What do they get irritated? And, and, and yeah. And yeah. especially what happens when the heroes find themselves in a situation where having someone omnipotent would really be useful. And the trickster says, no, mm -hmm. right. <laughs> like, no, I told you said, I had to limit my powers. I right. know you want me to stop the earth from blowing up, but I really can't. We gotta do yeah. this as norm. Yeah, I have normal people. I like that. <laughs> that feels like it would be a better NPC to hang out with them than a player character, unless you have a yes, player who's really dedicated to, to the NPC. bit. Yeah. Uh, you would you would need an incredibly good and sort of selfless player to pull yeah. that off. Yeah, I'm not saying that they're not out there, but I would I would yeah. take it with a grain of salt if somebody brought this as a character idea to you. Yeah, I would agree. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, and it does sort of. There's this low key sort of um, uh, low key, a low key kind of um, um, superiority yeah. that might not play resonate real well in a in a group the, dynamic. The Zatron brings up another great trope of tricksters: is what happens when an omnipotent trickster and a jobber trickster team up. Mm -hmm. um, and, I see. You know, say Quirk suddenly decides that conundrum is fascinating. Uh, and decides he wants to help him out. Um, and so he decides to go ahead and just make him omnipotent. <laughs> oh, how <laughs> fun. You know, um, then, yeah, things get bad really fast. <laughs> That's super fun. Bowman's all, basically already limiting himself. Otherwise, he'd solve all the Freedom League's problems. That's right, Claude. Yeah, yeah he just he keeps that power level X arrow in his quiver, but never uses it. That's yeah, right. no, he can't, he can't let Daedalus feel not helpful. Right. It's good for Daedalus. <laughs> He's doing he it for the, Daedalus. He's the character growth. The sacrifice. I love it. So yeah, um, any, any thoughts on like uh, constructing, you know, like if you want to uh, create this, you know, for, as a, uh, you know, I think the, I think that might've been, uh, doo -doo -doo -doo, sorry, I lost it. Gene might've asked uh, how to, how to construct some of this stuff. Other thoughts or anything about that, that might be a word to the wise, as far as, you know, putting those pieces of the puzzle together. Yeah, again, I think it's I think it's more about how you play it in game than the character sheet. But yeah, smart. Yeah. Uh, if you are looking for advice on the character sheet, I recommend coming up with the punniest punniest puns of all punny time. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah make it hurt. Uh, be so punishing. Um, 
uh, coming up with interesting, using a lot of afflictions and other things rather than straight up damage or powers that mess with people's perceptions of things or make it easier for the trickster to mm -hmm. avoid damage or get away from the heroes when they need to. Yep. Um, make sure that they've got challenge points or at least be liberal with the use of hero points in scenes involving them. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um. But yeah, I think more more than character construction, it's more about how you run them in the game. It is. Uh, take a good look at um, challenge sequences and uh, don't forget about things like traps and other sorts of things, installations the villain has set up other than just their personal powers um, because tricksters rely on setting a lot right. so far as that goes. Interesting. Uh, Sean Dugan mentions the, um, the the challenge of playing someone who's smarter and wittier than you. Um, <laughs> that's yeah. interesting. And but... you know, I think I think we could probably do a whole episode about how to do that because it is tough, or how to it play is. characters who aren't you. Yeah. Um, general advice is to when you're playing somebody who's smarter or wittier than you, you want to make sure that you don't lean so much on the role play aspect of getting those points across and lean more on the mechanical aspect of it and I be see. willing to spend hero points to get inspiration from the GM yep. or maybe come up with a deal with your GM where you have a house rule that if my intellect is a certain number, I get a certain number of free uses of the inspiration ability of a hero point, each adventure Ooh, nice or something idea. like that. Right. Yeah. Definitely. Don't be afraid to say, Hey, you know, my, uh, you know, either can I make an intellect or expertise skill roll for this, or you know, to, to you know, tell your GM, hey, my routine check value for this is huge. You know, like my routine check value for this like check would be like a twenty. Like, can I just know this? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been playing a super genius in one of the games that I'm playing right now who has a 12 intellect, which means that he's like one of the fifth or sixth most intelligent Smartest people in people. Earth Prime. So, right. yeah. Uh, yeah. What do so, I know, yeah. dude? Like, Dr. Adam is smarter than me, and I'm smarter than Daedalus. So what do I know about this right. topic? So, uh, chances are Very I know something about this. Right. Yeah, you know, Sean Vieira says, seriously, I'm more of a straight man in the comedy sense rather than the Joker, so doing jokes or puns is tough. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah I you get know, and that. that's what I always I love that. the GM yeah. will step back and say, here's what that's happening. What that, what this, this is what that person's doing as opposed to, you know, acting it out. Um, yeah, so and there's, out. there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, I know uh, Sean uh, jokes, catchphrase, imagine I made a witty comment there, but that can be what happens is my mm -hmm. character is funnier than me. I say something hilarious and it gives me a bonus in game. Yeah. And it doesn't yep. have to be That's something you punish yourself. Perfectly over, valid. But yeah. Mm -hmm. But to really embr embrace it with, with conviction that that's what you're doing and yeah. then people they'll enjoy it. Yeah. Presence and intellect are and awareness. I think in a lot of ways are the stats that we associate most with role playing as opposed to mechanics. Like I would never give you a 300 pound dumbbell and say, pick this up or your character can't do it. Can't do it. Right. Um, and I think it's giving yourself grace to know that there are mechanical differences between you and your character. Nice. nice. I like that. That's solid sound advice. Um, we are looking at uh, just a few more moments in the program. Uh, any final words or thoughts or resources or things that people ought to know before we uh, jump into updates? Uh, again, check with your players and let them know that it's a possibility before yep. you introduce this kind of scenario yes. to them. Yeah. Um, yeah. Make sure that you are laughing with the players and not at the players, even if yes. it's laughing at the characters. Yeah. Especially just try to avoid cruel humor if you can. Yes. Yeah. And understand that trust is uh, trust is something that you build over a long time with your players as a GM. And it's a currency you want to be really careful when you spend it and you want yeah. to check in with them and you want to let them know that just because just because this is something that I've done doesn't mean it's going to happen every game. It doesn't mean that it's going mm -hmm. to be something that you have to be vigilant towards. I'll let you know if something like this is going to happen again. Right. That's great. And go and read Devious Hearts. Excellent articles uh, that Absolutely. expand on all of this. Yep. Mm -hmm. Devious has dro dropped two links, three links in there with one of them to Monkey King. And uh, yeah, and you want to be sure that you are uh, joined up and um, over at the Atomic Think Tank because there's a lot of good mm -hmm. stuff going on for sure. Um, okay, well, so how about this? Steve, what have you got cooking in the Steve Kenson cinematic universe? Oh, well, right now, uh, huh, 
I am engaged in one of the, the most exciting activities in game design, which is building extensive spreadsheets of things. <laughs> Nice. Uh, which we sometimes do um, in order to prepare ourselves for particular projects. So right now I'm I'm building spreadsheets. Uh, it's it's very exciting. I bet. I'm um, although actually, better. in some it, it, there are definitely some interesting elements to it that hopefully yeah. I'll be able to tell you about at some point. That's right. I was going to say I bet that there's some people listening that will be like, "Hmm, I would love to see that," but they never can. Sorry. Yeah, um, this is one of the few times I've felt like, Steve, I need that report on my desk by Friday. <laughs> <laughs> uh, speaking of your desk, what's going on over at uh, Alex uh, Thompson Lund? Oh, Thomas you Lund, know, Thompson <laughs> stuff and things. Um, yeah, I I had the next episode of Freedom We Dark in the Multiverse of the Master Mage coming up on Wednesday. Our Good heroes fun. started their new journey in Barovia last week, and uh, they got eased into it by having to fight a big PL eleven. Uh, ice dragon skeleton. Oh. So, mm. you know, ice we're going to skeleton. Ravenloft in M&M. &M, so if you want to see what fantasy looks like or gothic horror fantasy looks like mm -hmm. in the masterminds, come hang out with us. Well, so that's for USP or the untold stories project. Yes. Yes. And indeed. you will see that at the link that I'm going to drop. Right yeah. But otherwise uh, working on some content for the atomic think tank, working on chrono crisis, uh, working on Oops, my development on pass of the book that shall not be named. <laughs> and he uh wants to be named but yeah. yeah but yeah lots of good stuff going on we've got lots of interesting things coming your way yes indeed nice uh fantastic um let me get that link in there before i there we go there's usp links to all the good stuff and some back episodes and all that jazz and so if you're hankering like i know gene is for an actual play uh get your actual play on check out what yeah, they're doing over check there check it out yeah. Also, thank you to everybody who ordered a copy of my book since the adventure came out. Um, Are you getting I, some? Uh, right. Some yeah. Uh, seven. Seven books have gone out since last Monday. Which oh, is fantastic. Better than that. Huge. That's right. Check out I Alex's that. book. Yeah, check it out. It's great background for good. Titan City. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and uh, well, hold on real quick. Let me make sure that we uh, in the Green Ronin online store, if you check out, um, oh my gosh, what was the adventure? It was the Lost Library. That's mm -hmm. right. The Lost Library. Um, you will find links to uh, Alex's books so that you can get a little backstory, get a little detail. Yeah. And uh, yeah. all of that can be found at the link in chat. I'm excited to hear how people's games there went. I want to hear how the baboons do their thing. Right. Yeah, me too. <laughs> me too. Um, fantastic. Okay, friends. Well, I want to thank everyone in chat for hanging out with us. Again, just a great wealth of resources. Oftentimes, I think what would what mm -hmm. it would be like if we sort of mined the chat for all the detail and sort of wrote an article about it or something. It's such mm -hmm. good information. Um, you know, and if you're thinking about, you know, gosh, I could write an article or I better pull out that character of mine that does this or that. Head over to the think tank. Drop it over there. Lots of great stuff. Yeah, we are do. watching and reading and sharing. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, we're going to start a little feature here um, on social media. We'll be sharing articles and things that pop up. And so if you want to be featured on the Green Ronin main stage, get to writing. And we will do that here, introduce that shortly, plus a bunch of other stuff. Um, that's right. right. Titan City and, and the Pole Yes, era that's an excellent point. Uh, for folks who are interested in checking out Alex's book, if you read it this week, you can ask him questions all about it next week because it will right. be all about Titan City. Yeah, check it out. All the links, of course, to Alex's books you'll find at the latest uh, Astonishing Adventure, The Lost Library, link in chat. And with that, I say thank you guys for hanging out again. Another episode that is just phenomenally um, uh, packed with lots of good detail and a lot of fun. Uh, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you again for hosting, Pleasure. Troy. Thank you, you for uh, thank you for the suggestion, imps and tricksters out there. Yeah, absolutely. All right, friends, have a great rest of your week. It's only Monday. We'll just, you come back and see us on Thursday for Thursday. We'll have some more fun. Bye. Take care. <laughs>